Hi, my name is Sajid. Today I'll be sharing some basic technical knowledge about uh, diffusion weighted imaging in brain. We know that diffusion weighted imaging is one of the important sequence in brain MR imaging. It is mainly used to used in the evaluation of stroke, especially ischemic stroke. Then uh, to analyze and grade various types of neoplasms and also to study different types of infections which affect the brain. I'll be explaining uh, the concepts under these categories. First, uh, introduction to diffusion and Brownian motion. Then how DW sequence is acquired and finally some of the clinical applications. Okay, uh, whenever we discuss diffusion, the first thing which comes is Brownian motion. Uh, let's understand Brownian motion with the help of a simple experiment. I'm gonna take a glass of water and uh, dip a tea bag into it. I'll slowly move the tea bag up and down so that the color is transferred to water. Basically, I'm manually moving the water molecules uh, to accelerate the process of movement of particles from tea bag to water. Uh, another way we can accelerate this process is that uh, we can use a spoon and stir so that the water will move. Now we can see that uh, the color is changed. Uh, why uh, color is changed? Uh, this is because of the movement of particles from tea leaves to the water. Okay, let's take another example. Again, I'm putting a tea bag into the glass of water. Now I'm not going to move the tea bag. Instead, simply I'm keeping this for two hours, but I'm not going, I'm going to move, uh, I'm not going to move either water or tea bag. Uh, still, we can see the color is changed, right? Uh, what does this mean? This means there is some molecular motion always present in water. Because of this tiny motion, particles from tea leaves transfers to water. The same movement is present in all tissues. This is called Brownian motion. In summary, we can define diffusion as random microscopic movement of water and other molecules. As I told before, uh, this is present in all living tissues actually. So this uh, motion is also called Brownian motion, which was first observed by English uh, scientist Robert Brown in 1827. So uh, that's all about diffusion phenomenon. And now, uh, how can we incorporate this uh, in clinical MR imaging? For this purpose, we are going to use a special sequence called uh, diffusion weighted imaging. Let's see how this works. Before going to diffusion weighted imaging, I'm going to give you an overview of how images are being generated in MRI. Let's take an example of a simple gradient echo sequence. Uh, first, uh, we position the patient inside the scanner. So here is the patient. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, the magnetic field lines. Basically, patient is lying in uh, inside the magnetic field. Uh, next, uh, we need to apply a radio frequency wave perpendicular to the magnetic field. So I will switch on the RF uh, for a short time and uh, switch off. Next step is to apply a gradient magnetic field. So uh, what are gradients? Gradients are simple electromagnetic coils, meaning whenever we pass electricity through this particular coil, it will generate magnetic field. And uh, this magnetic field is either added or subtracted to the main magnetic field, uh, which, uh, which again, based on the direction of the current. So uh, switch on the gradient, ma gradient magnetic field and we can collect the signal, uh, then store the signal as one line in a case space. So if we reconstruct this one line, we will get an image like this. This doesn't have any information, right? So in order to get uh, information from this anatomy, we need to repeat this process several times. At least we should do 100 times so that uh, we'll get uh, 100 lines to fill the case space. Ideally, uh, case space should, uh, should be uh, filled to get an image. Once the case piece is filled, uh, we can we can do the reconstruction and get the actual image. So uh, I'm going to like repeat the experiment several times. Now the case piece is filled. And if I uh, reconstruct this entire case piece lines, uh, I find, uh, I'll get the actual final image. This is just an example showing uh, what if we reconstruct the case piece lines as real time during acquisition. Yeah, so uh, that was the very basic high level overview of image formation in MRI. Let's come back to our topic diffusion weighted imaging. 
let's see the mechanism of ischemic stroke before going to DWA acquisition, because one of the major application of DWA is to detect stroke. As we all know that uh, uh, every tissues needs oxygen and nutrients for their normal function. Generally, tissues get oxygen and nutrients through the blood supply. For example, if you take this uh, this particular uh, brain tissue, it is getting oxygen and nutrient from this uh, cerebral arteries. It can be either middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery, or posterior cerebral artery. In this case, it is from the middle cerebral artery. As we can see uh, from this particular DSA image that uh, uh, the angiogram is normal and the brain tissues are getting adequate blood supply. But uh, look at this example. See the uh, DSA image. The middle cerebral artery is completely occluded. You can see the normal blood supply in this particular image. Ideally, it should be like this. But here, the M1 segment of MCA is blocked due to thrombus. Because of this, the brain tissues are not getting blood supply. If blood supply is not there, means it won't get uh, oxygen and other nutrients. Therefore, what will happen? Uh, this tissue will undergo infarction. Or uh, we can simply say that uh, these tissues will die. So what happens uh, to the Brownian motion? There won't be any Brownian motion in infarcted tissues. Uh, Brownian motion will stop. As we can see that uh, this is a normal tissue and uh, this one is with infarction. Uh, so uh, how can we detect this information in diffusion weighted imaging? Uh, let's see that. So uh, diffusion weighted imaging can be done using a, a sequence called echo planar imaging. Here, uh, uh, there will be a special set of uh, gradient application called uh, diffusion sensitizing gradients. And uh, this can be incorporated into either a spin echo or a gradient echo pulse sequence. Let's observe the mechanism of action. So uh, let's assume that uh, this is a stroke patient uh, in which certain portion of the brain uh, tissues underwent uh, infarction. Uh, we are going to take a small area of interest, for example, uh, uh, a pixel, consider this pixel. Uh, this pixel consists of a group of spins. Uh, because this tissue is infected, there won't be any brown in motion. Hence, uh, what will happen? Uh, this spins won't move actually. So uh, now I'm going to apply a diffusion gradient, which defaces the signal. Meaning when I switch on this gradient, it will kill all the signal from this group of spins inside the pixel. Immediately, after that, I will apply another diffusion gradient in which the polarity is opposite compared to the previous gradient into the same pixel. So this gradient is called a refacing gradient. So uh, what will this gradient do? It will reface the spins which were defaced by the previous diffusion gradient. Okay, uh, I'll repeat again. Uh, by using the first gradient, we killed all the signal from this pixel which is called defacing. And by applying that next gradient with opposite polarity, we will get all the signals back, which is called refacing. In summary, the first gradient defaces the spins and second gradient refaces the spin. So we will get very good signal from the pixel, meaning it will appear very bright in this particular image. And this bright appearance is usually called a diffusion restriction. What will happen? if we do the same experiment to the normal brain. Let's see that as well. Again, same pixel. There are a group of spins which are moving uh, due to Brownian motion because uh, uh, this is a healthy tissue, right? Uh, we will apply the first uh, diffusion gradient so that uh, this gradient will deface the spins. Next, uh, I'm applying the second diffusion gradient. Uh, look at this. Uh, uh, these spins are gone out of the pixel, out of this pixel. Now, a uh, new group of spins came into the pixel, the blue ones, which are not defaced by the first gradient. What will happen now? This refacing loop of the gradient tries to get signal back from the pixel, assuming that the green spins are inside the pixel. But in reality, the blue spins came into the pixel, which was never defaced by the first gradient. So uh, therefore, instead of refacing, or getting signals back, this gradient defaces the signal, meaning it killed all the signals. This happens again and again. We won't get any bright signal. So here is an example of uh, uh, example image of diffusion weighted imaging uh, of normal brain. 
we are not seeing any kind of bright signal in this particular image. Okay, so uh, one more important point about the uh, polarity of diffusion sensitizing gradients, both uh, defacing and uh, uh, refacing gradients, is that if it is a spinner core diffusion weighted imaging, their polarity remains same because of the presence of 180 degree refocusing pulse. Okay, so this is, uh, I mentioned here just to avoid any confusion whenever you see a pulse sequence diagram, All right? Okay, uh, coming to the clinical applications, let's see an example of diffusion weighted imaging in ischemic stroke. Here, a uh, large area of MCA territory is uh, affected. We can see the bright area here. ADC, or uh, the apparent diffusion coefficient is used to confirm the diffusion restriction, meaning uh, DW should be bright and ADC should be dark. Then we can say that uh, uh, this is a diffusion restriction. In this case, it is clear that uh, there is diffusion restriction along the MCA territory. Again, um, this is a case of glioma uh, in the right uh, temporal lobe. You can see the post-contrast T1-weighted image uh, uh, showing uh, heterogeneous enhancement, uh, diffusion-weighted imaging uh, showing hyperintensity in some uh, portion and the corresponding ADC map uh, shows uh, decreased ADC. And also some hyperintensity in the cystic areas. So. Uh, this actually clears, uh, clearly gives an idea about uh, uh, this particular lesion is having a high cellularity and uh, increased diffusivity in the cystic areas. Coming to the next case, uh, this is a case of brain abscess, a uh, patient presented with high fever and uh, headache. You can see post-contrast uh, T1-weighted image uh, shows a rim-enhancing lesion with uh, some uh, kind of uh, pachymeningeal enhancement in the right frontal lobe. Uh, DWA image uh, shows cystic, com cystic components uh, of the lesion as uh, uh, very hyperintense. The corresponding ADC map shows a decreased AD ADC in the cystic areas. So uh, this is the like uh, uh, information which we get from uh, one of the uh, inf infections called uh, cerebral uh, abscess. Okay, uh, that was a short in intro to DWA. Uh, thank you.